All right, we're going to start now. Uh, those who are late will be joining us later. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Simon, and today I'm going to give this webinar to you uh, on behalf of EU Cortex. Uh, I, sh I think most of you are here because you probably currently have some projects regarding the airports uh, and video surveillance to be installed there, or you are planning to uh, install such projects. And today I'm going to tell you about what we can offer you to uh, bring maximum benefits to the video surveillance system uh, installed in the airports. Uh, I'll try to make this webinar today as interactive as possible, so I won't be uh, really following the slides. I'll give you more demonstration of how our video analytics works and how it can benefit the airports. Uh, uh, without further ado, let's go to the uh, video analytics that can be useful uh, for the airports. Here are some tasks that uh, most airports have to solve. And these tasks uh, can be accompanied by our VMS and our intelligent video analytics solutions. Uh, th these are the tasks that um, mostly represent what our intelligent modules uh, do. And now I'm going to give you more in depth in uh, some of them. Uh, first, um, this is the list of the modules that we recommend uh, airports to install if they use EU Cortex VMS because these modules, based on our experience, uh, have most demand in such uh, industry and uh, can bring maximum benefits and uh, to the client who installs, uh, who runs airports, or, who, or to the integrators who install video surveillance system uh, in such uh, industry. Let me start with our first module for today, which is smoke and fire detection. This module helps airports to uh, uh, be informed whenever the fire or smoke takes place. Uh, it can uh, sense this, the, the fire even before uh, traditional smoke sensors uh, detects it. And it is also very help, helpful to be installed outside the airport as uh, usual smoke sensors and smoke detectors uh, cannot be installed there. Let me show you uh, how this module works and how the interface will look to the operator. Screen with you now. Uh, can you please confirm if you can see the screen uh, that I'm sharing? It is with EU Cortex Configurator. If you can see the screen that I'm sharing, can you please write plus in the chat? So I know that you all can see it. Thank you, Rupali. Uh, so let me turn on uh, the camera which shows smoke and fire. Let me find it. Smoke and fire. I enable it, and here the settings are very simple. You can detect smoke and fire both, or you can detect only smoke or only fire. We're going to detect both of them. So we apply the settings. Thank everyone for confirming and participating. So. Here we see the uh, stream from the camera where the fire has been detected by our uh, video management software. You can see that uh, when the camera detects fire, it uh, frames uh, the fragment of the video in red where the fire takes, takes place. And uh, beside that, it creates uh, bookmarks in the journal. And later on, after the uh, fire has been distinguished. Uh, you can go to the uh, journal and quickly find the, the moment when the fire started. And uh, it is very helpful during the investigation processes. So we go to the journal, uh, select only smoke and fire camera. 
here you'll see that uh, the bookmarks with the timestamps are provided and you can just double click there uh, and you straight away get to the moment in the archive where the fire was detected. You can play back and forward and investigate what caused the fire to to appear. Also, uh, just now I saw it. Smoke detected, yeah. Um, if there is only smoke or the fire is uh, accomplished by the smoke, uh, you also get informed because sometimes, you know, the fire can take place in the room where the camera is not installed, but the smoke will be seen on uh, other cameras. Uh, this is also a signal to you that uh, something is wrong and you need to take action. Uh, it also double click will send you to the archive uh, where the smoke has been detected. You can set the scenario uh, whenever the smoke or fire is detected to receive email uh, uh, notification or push notification to your mobile applications or SMS will, which will uh, let you immediately react to uh, the to, to the case of in case of fire and uh, dis, uh, distinguish it uh, before it causes uh, uh, many troubles and it it helps you to uh, prevent losses to be uh, more significant than uh, they are if you use our module. Uh, Probably it is uh, in the airports, especially where uh, there are a lot of people and a lot of uh, expensive equipment. Uh, the uh, sooner you prevent uh, the smoke or fire, the more lives and uh, money your company will save. Most importantly, of course, the lives of your customers. Uh, all right. Uh, in case you have any question, uh, I will give time in the end of the presentation. But uh, while I'm making demonstrations, maybe you, something, if something is not clear, please feel free to write your questions in the chat. I will try to answer all of them, and um, I'll try to solve any issues you have. I see one question. Does the VMS pick up the smoke or flame first, and also at what size? Um, actually, the system detects both smoke and fire. It can be uh, detected at the same time. Uh, the about the size that um, I'm not really sure, uh, honestly, because that also depends on the camera quality. Uh, in pixel terms, I think uh, it is something about uh, 30 by 6. 30 by 60 pixels, but I'm not sure. Uh, I will check it, and if this question is still uh, important for you, you can always write to my personal email. Uh, which I wrote in the chat, and uh, in case you still have this question, I will uh, check and answer it, because now uh, I'm not sure the exact, about the exact number. Uh, Let's go to the next video analytics module. Uh, I hope uh, about smoke and fire, it's clear now. And the next module, which can be very useful in airport industry, is the tracking. Uh, it is our tripwire module, which uh, has which combines three functions within it. First, and a very popular function is the line intersection. You can set the line. Uh, in the in any area. Uh, while I'm explaining, let me give the demo. Not to make our webinar too long, uh, I will. It works, and at the same time, uh, explaining what this module does. Basically, uh, you set the line in the camera view, uh, whenever you want, wherever you want, and uh, once the object intersects the line, crosses the line. Uh, you get immediate notification and you uh, get a bookmark in the journal. Uh, let me show how it looks while configuring this module. We turn on tracking module and here we go to alarm settings. Uh, first type is line intersection alarm. 
we can place it wherever we want and we can also set uh, any number of uh, lines uh, and detection zones for example we don't want would want to be informed whenever the objects cross this line we can also provide the sizes of the objects for example if we don't want uh, people intercepting the line to be counted we only want the cars to be counted to be considered as objects crossing the line uh, we can set the sizes to be bigger than the humans uh, which will helps us to uh, distinguish people and the cars uh, also the alarm zone I already have one this is the alarm zone uh, two types of alarms can be set here we can make the zone of any shape any size uh, wherever we want uh, the two alar t alarm types uh, using the detection zone are the moving within the zone which will inform you uh, when any movement takes place in the zone when uh, the person or the car uh, is moving within the defined zone or lengthy presence in the zone which means if the person in the uh, he stays for uh, longer than the preset time in this zone for example longer than 30 seconds very useful for example if uh, there are uh, areas very for example some restricted areas where people are usually passing by these areas but they are not allowed to uh, it might be it might be suspicious when people are staring uh, in the windows or staying for a very long time in a certain zone and you want to be informed about any su such uh, inc uh, incidents uh, if this person stays within the zone and doesn't uh, get out of the zone for longer than 30 seconds your operator will be informed uh, is it possible to define time schedule in this tracking module uh, yes you can uh, define the uh, you can schedule any camera not only the uh, modules uh, it is set let's don't say changes uh, it is set here archive settings so you can turn on camera only on specific uh, period of time for example only uh, from 9 to 18 hours from Monday to Friday and the camera will be uh, recording only uh, during the, these periods of time uh, so uh, the module will work during this period as well uh, it will allow you to save the archive space and uh, the hardware resources uh, this function is very useful because honestly if you're for the airport they open 24 hours a day but uh, maybe in some areas you know that they are not going to be uh, any for example if you know that uh, in, only on weekends in in the room there must not be anyone yeah you can set it to detect only during the weekends that's uh, not an issue. Hope that answered your question, Antonio. Uh, let's try to run this module and see how it looks in the client. Uh, whenever you configure, make change configurations, the uh, client applications needs to restart. Client is the application where you actually uh, watch the cameras. Here you see when. Uh, the objects are moving within the zone they are uh, highlighted they're framed in orange and the zone is also highlighted line intersection same when object intersects the line in both directions you can actually specify the directions for example if you only want to consider those objects moving uh, one direction or, or only moving with a different direction uh, it also can be set here you can see uh, the alert zones and similar to uh, smoke and fire the bookmarks are created in the journal so you can go to the archive by double clicking and watch who intersects the line uh, what he did next and just to track this person within the seconds uh, any type of notifications like email SMS or push notifications can also be uh, set uh, for you to get 
uh, immediate notifications. Uh, time schedule without turning off the cam example recording 24 7 but tracking only in the night let me check how I can do it I know you can definitely do it if you uh, connect this camera twice to the uh, VMS but let me see I think I think it's possible to so see it somewhere <laughs> I never actually tried to do that, but it should be something somewhere here. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, I, I don't know how to set it. But uh, I will ask the developers. Probably they are aware of this function because uh, I cannot see where where to set it now. I think we had this function. Uh, let me go back to you, Antonio, uh, after the webinar, and I will email you the the answer whether it's possible or not. Yes. And if it's possible, uh, I will help you to. I will tell you how to do it. Uh, thank you, Antonio. Okay, next module, abandoned object detection. Uh, in the airports, unfortunately, there are cases when uh, the criminal attempt to plant bombs or any other bad things, or in uh, not such bad case, just any baggage left uh, can be can cause some troubles for the clients, and you always want to be informed whenever such object has been left unattended uh, just to take some actions either to uh, remove this back from the public area or to uh, give this uh, luggage back to the owner. This module informs you whenever the uh, object has been left unattended for longer than the preset time to the screen sharing and now I'm going to set the uh, abandoned object detection module. Abandoned object detection. OK. Here we can test it. Fortunately, this video is a bit short because uh, we are using uh, the pre recorded videos for the demonstration purposes and for our recently updated module we have uh, redesigned, uh, not redesigned, but reinvented the algorithm for uh, the abandoned object detection uh, module and if you want the module to detect abandoned objects it needs to uh, first you need to install it and uh, give it a couple of minutes to understand the background and after that it can work and define the abandoned objects because if you uh, turn this camera on and the abandoned objects appears within a couple of seconds it may cause some issues but let me show you how it works uh, here you said the detection times how, how uh, long these objects should be left unattended for the module to start working to detect it as uh, abandoned for example 30 seconds you can uh, limit the object size minimum and maximum sizes can be uh, defined interactively and the detection zone can be also drawn here drawing the mask uh, sensitivity is uh, if your uh, camera has a lot of noise or your background uh, is not very clear, not plain, uh, you can set the this, this sensitivity uh, lower uh, and not to cause any issues with the noise in the camera. So we'll save the uh, save the configurations. 
and unfortunately now this module will not uh, work because the video as I said is too short it doesn't have time to learn the background but whenever the object is uh, left unattended for longer than 30 seconds uh, it will be framed in a uh, red frame and again the bookmark in the journal will uh, will be created so as, as with previous modules uh, you get immediate notifications which helps you to prevent any losses and any uh, accidents from happening Let's go to the presentation. Here. These are the benefits and the uh, mode of how, how these modules work. All the slides you will be receiving uh, after the webinar by email. Uh, so you can read it by, uh, by yourself. Now uh, I'm trying to explain everything what is in the slides during the demonstration. Phase detection is the module which helps during the investigation processes. It allows you to filter the archive uh, only by the faces. So uh, within a couple of clicks, you can uh, re receive only the fragments in the archive where the uh, faces has been detected. So you can uh, quickly f uh, identify which people were in, uh, during a specific time in the airport uh, in order to, for example, if you are searching for a particular person uh, this module can be very useful, can save you time during the investigation. Again, I need to configure this module to show you. Going back to my screen. and phase detection module. Uh, while this module works, it creates the... Uh, it indexes the video archive and whenever it detects, it uh, creates like uh, for, for the program, it indexes it and while you ask it for re the report on the phase detection, uh, you get it within seconds. So it, does, it doesn't search through the archive once you ask it to do so it uh, already knows where the faces are. So here is only one check where face detection is and uh, the quality of the face detection just by applying the settings. And here we need to wait for some faces to appear in the camera view and the reports will be able to uh, will, ha will allow us to search for the faces. Not the reports but the search function will be enabled here. You can see one face appears in the camera view. It, does, it doesn't necessarily need to look straight in the camera. It can also detect the faces on the background once they are clearly seen with uh, Two, two eyes and nose and mouth, so the whole face should be seen in the camera view, even in the background, and it will be detected. Here you have search button. If we choose this camera face detection, specify the time, last hour. And we have this function search by face function. Just need to enable it and press search and it will find all the faces, we can group the results that have uh, appeared in front of the camera as I have said this man appeared in the background of the camera but he still has been detected uh, if you run it for longer it will really save your time just showing all the faces that appeared in front of the camera no need to search for the to look through the archive uh, for every camera one by one Going back to the presentation, the next module is uh, one of the modules we are proud to say it is 
uh, our pat patented module and uh, this module is I would say kind of more advanced uh, function of phase detection like it also helps during the investigation process it helps to search through the archive but uh, much much easier not only by the phase but uh, by providing the uh, photo of the suspect or just defining the cloth colors. If you have, for example, if you know that a thief in the airport stole, has stolen something or uh, left something uh, and the witnesses says that this person was wearing uh, blue jeans and black shirt, you can search only for those people in uh, black shirt and blue jeans uh, across all your cameras and track this person, his uh, route, his trajectory, uh, knowing what time and uh, at uh, what camera he appeared and get the video clip of his whole trajectory uh, on the plan. Uh, I'll show you how. So I had said before uh, the cameras here are some cameras. Uh, some cameras that have been recorded. And uh, they are all installed in one premises. It's actually our offices. And with, uh, across all these cameras, we want to search for a person. We'll go to search function. Go to cameras and select only those cameras we want to search through. last hour. Search sample, we only want to search for a person wearing a green shirt and red jeans. We add a sample and press search button. Uh, and the algorithm starts searching for uh, similarities within the last hour across all the cameras uh, for a person uh, who is wearing a similar color of the clothes. Sorry, I had some technical issues. Let me go back to my remote desktop. Uh, I have a question here while I'm trying to fix the connection. Uh, what is the intermediate time period that the module registers the same face again as a new event. For example, it won't be practical to get 100 images of the same person just because it, he's strolling in front of the camera for one minute. Uh, I agree, Janice, but this module is not the face recognition module, which we're going to talk about later on. It doesn't recognize whether this face is, uh, this, oh, is, is, is it the, face, uh, the face of the same person or not. It just detects whether uh, there is face. So yeah, that is an issue. We have this result grouping, which allows you to uh, get uh, to uh, combine similar faces to the one, but it still uh, it doesn't have the function of recognizing this face, whether it's the face of the same person or not. It just gives you the faces. So, yeah, if the person is staying in front of the camera, you're probably going to get a lot of pictures of this person, uh, but the result grouping still uh, allows you to make the, the number a bit uh, less. Uh, 
no, no genius doesn't track the the face as long as it's still inside the camera because uh, this face may uh, stay still and uh, this uh, our face detection module works only with moving objects so uh, it may when the face face stays still uh, it can lose it and then find this uh, face again so it will, it, the algorithm will think it's like two different faces this function is not pro uh, uh, provided due, uh, within this module so it's a bit different module I'm going to talk about it a bit later on setting let me go back to the screen demonstration everything will be working fine now uh, so we, again we go to search okay here we had already some results this is the guy we were probably searching for you can double click and uh, get the picture of this guy in the archive play forward and backward he was spotted on one of the cameras and we can press suspect tracking if you want to search for uh, where this guy appeared on maybe other cameras uh, I have installed the plan and I put all these cameras uh, on the plan you can see that this guy was spotted here in the yellow camera so select all the cameras go to object selection now the algorithm will uh, show us all the images of this person like post he, the algorithm thinks that this might be this person so the combination of uh, your operator and the our system will help to get the most accurate results we need to check the pictures of this person uh, on all the cameras and below you can see that this is the timeline and it is start uh, being covered in blue so a uh, blue color means that during this period the suspect has been spotted so we can move to the different time period and select the pictures of this person again the button here allows to get more accurate results as you have already selected multiple uh, pictures of the suspect while pressing here it uh, analyzes the pictures you have already selected and gives you more accurate results Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, spend some a bit more time uh, on the timelines in order to get better results and get the full trajectory of this aspect on the plan. Give me just a couple more seconds, and within a couple of minutes, uh, you can already know where this person uh, go, when he was in certain area, and you can. Uh, see what he did while being in the airport whether he did anything bad and okay I think that's that can be enough we just press view the results and we can see the trajectory of this person on the on the plan on the right and the video clip uh, of this person's uh, uh, journey in the airport uh, but this is not the error, but it can be the airport and if uh, on any camera he did something wrong we will be able to see it within the seconds you can export this video clip with the plan uh, send it to the police as a proof and uh, as you can see we have just filtered five cameras and it took us only about three minutes uh, to find all the frames of this suspect uh, within five cameras and during the last one hour okay I think that's the most uh, useful function also you can uh, track this person any person from the archive by clicking uh, here for example press track button so we can track any person which I have no need to search for him specifically All right, let's go back to the presentation. I will still have some other video analytics that is uh, that are useful for airport solutions. Okay, I see the question: How important hardware camera is to this module? Uh, 
that I would say this uh, module distinguishes the colors, so the uh, the quality of the camera is definitely a benefit for this for the module, but you don't need like a six megapixel camera or very very high quality HD quality cameras for this module to work. As you can see, as you could see, uh, we didn't use any uh, very expensive cameras to uh, record the videos for the suspect search as it uh, only need to define the colors. Uh, true colors. Uh, yes, I have selected red pants. This gives a range of colors uh, because you know in some light conditions in different light, cameras can be installed within different light conditions so uh, it still gives some kind of um, uh, range for the color for the color uh, also you can see that um, it can show you not only specifically red color red jeans and uh, green uh, shirt but something that might look uh, within a specific lighting condition that might be actually red and green. So, um, you selected red pens and the image was showing a bit orange. Yeah, that's a, a, what I said about the range of colors uh, because uh, you know, with the camera, one camera is installed uh, near the window and there is a bright sun, the colors might be different from uh, the same person walking in the shadow area. And as we are uh, aiming to search for the person uh, across multiple cameras, uh, we add this range. And also you, you can never uh, provide the exact sh uh, shade of red or sh shade of orange color. Uh, it's very difficult to provide, so we use the average. Our module uses the average for uh, better quality. Uh, Okay, loud sound detection. Uh, this one I cannot make demonstration of, uh, but if your camera has the microphone installed, uh, you can be notified whenever the loud sound appears uh, near the camera. It can be the gunshot, it can be the explosion, or any uh, machine breakdown. Uh, and with with this uh, notification, you also get the bookmark in the journal. And uh, after it happens, uh, you can just click, double click, and uh, find the reasons of what caused this loud sound. Uh, within the seconds, it can be done by operator, or it can be done by the police department later on, because the bookmark bookmarks are saved, and you don't need to search for. A specific time and uh, the frog fragment in the archive. Uh, you get the information within seconds, and also you can set uh, any scenarios what to do, what to be done when the loud sound is detected. Maybe to send notification to the police department or to your uh, security offices. Uh, that all depends on what you set. All can be personalized. Crowd monitoring is the module that detects how many people are present in a specific defined zone. And when this number of people increases a certain amount, for example, it, uh, if uh, in specific areas in the airports, like the uh, takeoff line, uh, it is very dangerous where the crowd uh, appears there. And you all you want to know whether uh, when number of people uh, in this area increases, for example, 15 people, uh, you set this module on the camera, and whenever the uh, there are more than 15 people in the zone, you get notified. And when this number reaches close to 15 people, you don't trigger the alarm, but you get not like you get informed that uh, you should pay attention to that. Uh, there are probably going to be a lot of people. Uh, take action if something is bad is going on. Uh, also, as you can see on the picture, uh, the crowds can mean that something happened in this area because usually uh, 
during the accidents, a lot of people tend to either go get closer to the accident if it's not uh, no longer dangerous or uh, move away from the accident. And all the crowd uh, in airports is usually usually requires attention uh, from the side of the security. Uh, I'll probably also skip the demonstration of this module. Uh, if you are interested, please let me know, because otherwise it's going to take very long time for us. Face recognition, this module I will uh, spend a bit more time on, because it is uh, one of the most demanded module, uh, also for re uh, airport industry. Uh, this module is more advanced than the face detection, because it not only uh, detects the face, it actually compares it to the database where you can add uh, certain faces, for example, of your employees, of your staff members, uh, which will allow you to uh, to develop automated access control. Uh, you can add all your staff members and ask the system to open the gates automatically when these people appear in front of the camera. Moreover, if you uh, know, for example, the police sends the uh, photos of the criminals. You can add them to the database and add to the blacklist uh, and set the scenario whenever the person from the backlist appears in front of the camera or just has, is spotted by the camera. No need to be uh, like to be staring in the camera and just staying right in front of the camera. Uh, just whenever this person from the backlist is spotted, to be informed and to uh, ask the system to send you the screenshot of this person with the timestamps and send it to the police as well. Uh, let me show you how it works. We also are using this module in our office. Uh, make automated access control, so I don't have any key to get uh, to access my office to uh, enter my office. I only use my face as my key. Okay, this one probably gonna turn off. Hope you can see the screen. Okay, apply. Okay, uh, let's select one channel. First, I'm going to show you the live camera from our entrance. Uh, it is now probably no one going to pass it, but uh, this is the camera we use to uh, make an automatic access control. Uh, you can see in the reports all the faces that has been detected by the camera. And if you go to the database, which is here, you can see that I have added some of our staff members, uh, added some uh, couple pictures of my face, and put me to allowed group. And I have set scenario for if the person uh, from allowed group uh, appears in front of the camera, the door opens automatically. Uh, very convenient, very useful. As you can see, we can add uh, several groups and set scenario for each group or for each person individually. And if you go to another camera, this one, you can see that it uh, detects all the faces with the time streams. If this person, uh, e even if it, it is not in the camera view, we can set it to recognize to show only the people who appeared, uh, who are from the database. Probably in this camera there are no such people. And you can see that this guy, he's sitting in the very, very background here. And he's still recognized by the camera, so if we added this guy in the database, uh, he would be recognized by the system. Let's do it right now. It's very easy to 
add the person to the database. One button allows you to do that. So select the group. So let's be allowed. Provide any information. Any information to be shown, and this guy is added to the database. You can add more pictures of him for better recognition, for better accuracy of this module. Uh, you can also filter for for a particular person if you are searching. Won't know when this, um, for example, when Danny. appeared in front of the camera. Uh, you have all the fragments in the archive when he appeared there. And you know the time when he was spotted by the camera. Uh, also you can search for the group, filter by the groups. If you want to know only uh, who of your staff, staff members entered the premises and what time? You can see that the list full can add many groups here. Filter uh, the way you want uh, and set the accuracy of this module as well. Many benefits of this module. Uh, prevent the criminals from entering, uh, grant access to your staff members, and filter for the, through the archive to get uh, better information and uh, to investigate much, much more efficiently. License plate recognition, pretty similar to face recognition in terms of usage for the airport parking lot, par uh, parking space. Uh, it detects the license plate and recognizes it. You can also filter the archive based on the license plate to know what time this car appeared uh, and get the uh, fragment on the, uh, in the archive with this car. Also, if you know that this car uh, uh, is owned by your staff member, you can also grant access to this car to restricted areas. And if you know that some cars are being uh, wanted by the police, you can also get notifications whenever this car appeared in front uh, appeared uh, in the camera view. Uh, we have integrated EU Cortex license plate recognition with multiple templates from multiple countries. We now. Okay, this is going to turn off. And the camera, this one. We have uh, two types of license plate recognition. One is parking license plate recognition, and one is highway. A parking uh, detects the license plates of the cars moving uh, not faster than 20 kilometers per hour. Uh, we recommend it to be used in the parking spots or uh, in, at the checkpoints in the entrance to open the arm barrier or to close the arm barrier. And also the highway licenses, which uh, detects the cars moving at uh, the speed up to 150 kilometers per hour. I would say uh, up to 180. Uh, and uh, this type of license plate uh, recognition module is usually installed on the highways, on the roads, uh, where you need to detect, for example, the cars that are only coming to your airport, not already in there. To, for example, if you know the license plate of the car, of the criminal, or of any person you don't want to get even close to your airport, uh, you can set your camera on the road coming to the airport, and you will always be informed when this uh, car is running toward your airport. You can also determine motion directions, meaning that you can, uh, if you know that your airport is this way, this way, uh, you only get in, uh, notifications when the cars are moving in that direction or different direction, or you can ignore this setting. Like uh, control the barrier here. Uh, open it manually from our 
uh, VMS. We will have two buttons there. And here is the list of the countries we have integration with. My country doesn't have uniform license plate. What is accuracy to be expected with this? India. Let me see what we have for India here. So here are four types of uh, license plate templates we have for India. Uh, if the license plate is uh, using the same template as here, uh, the numbers can be different, but the template is, is similar. Uh, the license plate will be defined then. Uh, if it is not, uh, the license plate will not be defined. So here, here is what we have for India. Uh, probably uh, later, if there will be demand, we will add some other templates if there are some for India, uh, then they will be also recognized. But here's what we, what we have for now. I have the video recorded only for Russian uh, road, so we're going to use Russian templates. Here is the list, a bunch of them. Uh, some very rare ones, which I have never seen uh, on the streets. So we set the License plate numbers, search zones, just some si uh, simple settings. Uh, not necessarily, not necessary settings, but they will help you to uh, increase the accuracy of this module. Uh, Janice, you ask for face recognition. What is the pixel count required to recognize a face? Uh, we have requirement that between two eyes of a person there should be at least 30 pixels 30 pixels between two eyes that is the minimum requirement for the face to be recognized and when the face is uh, right in front of the camera for example if the camera is installed uh, in, at the entrance and this person is passing through the camera the minimum there like in the very very foreground, when the face is in the very foreground, the minimum uh, uh, size there should be 50 pixels. But if this person is in the background, the minimum size is, uh, minimum distance is 30 pixels. Okay, let's turn on uh, license plate recognition. And similar to the face recognition, you see on the right uh, license plates that have been recognized. And if this car is in the database, you know you see the information about the driver and about the car and whatever information you provide uh, with the, uh, uh, in the database. You see two buttons open and close the arm barrier if the camera is connected to the arm barrier uh, with uh, dry contacts. Uh, you can operate it here manually or set it to be uh, arm barrier to be opened automatically uh, when the license plate uh, belongs to your staff member. And similarly, we have reports here. You can filter it. You can see by the uh, license plate number, by any information in the database. Or just know, uh, see all the license plates that appeared in the camera view with the timestamps. And double click will let you to let you go to the archive and uh, view the fragment of this card to get the picture, give us get a screenshot uh, within the seconds. This is the highway. The parking works uh, absolutely the same way, but the limitation is that uh, the speed of the car it recognition is done uh, on the recording speed of six frames per second for the parking. Uh, ty uh, type of license plate recognition and for the highway it works on 25 frames per second. Okay. Similarly you can add to the database any license plate number and provide any information you want here. Uh, people counting. Uh, there are actually multiple ways for, to use people counting in the airport industry. We had a, a case when the 
client who owns airport ask uh, people counting module to be installed uh, at the toilet entrance and to count how many people entered in order for the cleaners for the cleaning uh, operators to know when to start cleaning the toilet again so for example after every hundred people uh, needs to go and clean the toilet so this uh, module has multiple uh, functions to do. Uh, the very basic, very common is to count the traffic. Uh, what it does is uh, once you install the camera at the entrance, it can count how many people entered or exited uh, your premises. Recently we have launched our new solution which is 3D people counting. Uh, for airport it is, I would say, uh, much much uh, better than the standard uh, people counting because it distinguishes human and the luggage as you can see on the picture the human uh, uh, in the airports are usually with the luggage and with uh, usual people counting this luggage can be sometimes counted as a person resulting in slight error but 3d people counting solution allows to deviate this error and um, let me sh demonstrate you the video of how our 3D people counting module works. Our people counting module works the same, but the algorithm is a bit different, resulting in higher accuracy for 3D people counting. 3D people counting uh, works at 98.6% uh, accuracy, and it, it can even work uh, in complete darkness. So. Uh, it uses different technology and it requires uh, our Eucortex hardware 3D camera to be installed. Uh, usual people counting can work with any camera. So I'm going to give you the show you the video. 3D people counting. The interface of usual people counting is uh, the same. So let's watch it. on the right top angle the number of entering and exiting people is shown and the boxes are not counted by 3D people counting. Multiple people entering and exiting uh, is also not an issue for people counting. Both 3D and usual 3D people counting. So that is how this module works. Again, for airports, I would personally recommend to be 3D people counting to be installed due to uh, people in the airports always carrying baggages, uh, uh, some cards, uh, which uh, may result in the deviation from the actual number. Can you share this video later, please? Sure, Rupali, I can send you the we have it on our YouTube channel. Uh, I will. I'm gonna send this the link to you now. In case, just I will try to uh, not to forget to send it to you personally later on. But just in case, uh, I will send this link now to the group chat. Give me a second. Uh, this is the YouTube link. Here it is. Uh, okay. Let's move next to the people counting. You, you can set the line uh, on your own and the setup uh, by 3D people camera is done automatically. Uh, you can only set the uh, minimum height of the objects to be considered as human. Uh, this, uh, the height of the object allows to distinguish human and uh, carriages and boxes, luggage. 
Audio stream processing, next module we're going to talk about. Uh, if your camera supports speakers or microphones, you can communicate with the clients in the airports uh, directly uh, using your CCTV uh, system. Uh, just imagine the smart airport where whenever a person have, has a question, he can uh, get to any camera or to the specific cameras uh, in, uh, installed in public areas and just talk to the camera, ask uh, any question and the camera, the operator will re reply this person through the camera. Uh, this is what our module allows you to do. allows you to receive and send the voice record uh, through the camera and receive from the camera. Uh, again, I cannot do the demonstration for you. But uh, it has many benefits, limited only by your imagination. Uh, the only thing you need can be uh, working. It can be working with uh, any camera, the, which has speakers or microphones. It can work in both directions, receiving and sending the vo voice uh, audio streams, or, or working only on receiving or only on sending the audio streams. Personal monitoring. Uh, it is for the airports. It's mostly useful, in my opinion, and in based on the experience of our company, uh, on the check-in counters to know, or in the uh, gates at the gates to know. Uh, for example, you know that the check-in counter should open at 3 a.m. and if at 3 a.m. there is uh, no activity in this zone. Uh, the uh, system will inform you about that and you will get notifications. You, you can investigate why there is no one uh, at the working place or why is anyone uh, sleeping or not performing any action there. You know which uh, counter, which exactly check-in counter is, uh, uh, with, is not working currently and uh, know who is responsible for that and immediately solve this issue in order to improve the customer experience. Uh, demonstration, brief demonstration, as I see, uh, webinar takes a bit long, but as fast as possible. Settings, configurator. Configuration doesn't take a lot of time because uh, our system is very intuitive. It has been proven by multiple uh, people, even not being um, uh, not knowing our system, they can uh, work with it and can solve any issues. I've already defined this, the alert zones, not to sp uh, waste time now. You'll see how the interface of the client interface look like. <clears throat> Let's zoom in a bit using our digital zoom using fisheye camera here. Here you'll see four zones. Uh, I have set the zone to be detected as inactive after a minute of uh, not performing any actions. So this, this guy is not at his working place and in one minute uh, this uh, um, zone will be changed to the red, the frame will be changed to the red and inactive zone notifications will be created and the bookmark will be added to the journal. Uh, the zones can be defined interactively in the archive, can be set as many zones, zone here, zone here, it can be one whole zone or as multiple smaller zones. If the person uh, presents in the camera but he's not moving, he's sleeping or he's uh, no, uh, just not performing any action, even slight move of the mouse or the keyboards uh, will uh, result the uh, alert to be created as well. So let's wait for the zone to turn red and the the bookmark to be created. In the airport you can use one camera to be installed in the check-in counter zone to uh, monitor all the check-in counters depending on like uh, 
here we are using fisheye camera so within one camera we can detect multiple zones you can see that the, the zone has changed to low activity zone meaning that uh, already sometimes there was no activity but it's still not alert it is just for you to pay attention here uh, that mean, meaning that this zone requires attention uh, maybe the person is still here but just uh, you better check it that's what this uh, information is saying in a while it's going to turn to inactive zone and turn red well these zones will not as actions are uh, taking place there you will also receive the bookmark in the journal here uh, after it gets read also allowing you to get the fragment in the archive for example if you want to punish your employee or other uh, vice versa to benefit to uh, reward your employees or to fire this can be served as a proof of uh, of your actions like why you decided to do that here you can see that it turned to inactive zone one and turn uh, red the name of the zones can be set uh, on your own for example you can write the names of the employees here and in the journal you can see an activity zone has, is defined and you see which zone is defined yeah really there is no one here if this time this person should be here uh, he's in trouble uh, to the presentation people counting in a queue is different from simple people counting because it uh, counts how many people are currently in the queue it can be in a uh, checking queue if uh, this number is longer than the preset number uh, maximum is 5 or maximum is 10 uh, you get informed uh, meaning that uh, in order to improve the customer experience uh, you better open another cashier another check-in counter Let's see. Um, Okay, I'm going to give you a demonstration of this module very briefly. Configurator. We are currently developing uh, the update for people count people counting in the queue, which will be based, um, which will be based on the uh, newer nets. Uh, give me a second. Uh, so people counting in the queue here. We turn it on. We already defined the zones and already configured this, so we just need to apply the configurations. And we are done. Uh, we'll continue in queue. Here you'll see uh, it is training now, so. Uh, before you s once you set it it's better not to have any people in the zones we can see zone 1 and zone 2 here we set multiple zones in one camera and now it may result in some uh, slight error but you'll just see how it works yeah as I said while it was training this lady was in the camera still you yeah, know it works fine uh, it shows you the number of people in the zone Zone one, one person. Zone two, zero people. And when this, if this number increases, uh, I think three. I have preset three. You get notifications. You can set scenario, and the bookmark created as well. Screen that I'm sharing because I think I forgot to turn it on. I'm sorry for that. Here you can see uh, the zone, two zones, zone one and zone two. And uh, the number after two dots showing you uh, how many people are in the queue now. We had some issues with training of, of the system. 
uh, but now it is working. When the person is moving uh, in the queue, it detects it as, as a person. And if this number increases three, you get notified, uh, which will mean that you better open new cashier or new counter. This is uh, example of the retail store, but uh, this model is applicable to the airports as well. Okay, let's go to the next module. Next module we have is PTZ camera control. Uh, I think you all know what is that is uh, allows you to control your pan tilt and zoom cameras uh, we, directly from EOCortex VMS. Uh, you can control it using our virtual joystick or using your keyboard or using a uh, hardware joystick which are all integrated with EU Cortex. So we can use one camera to cover bigger uh, zones, bigger sp spots. You can also set the preset and uh, set the uh, trajectory of the camera and put it on the uh, tracking mode. So it uh, moves on pre predefined scenario. Fish ID warping is uh, allows you to see multiple, use one camera, fisheye camera, and view it as uh, either multiple uh, simple camera, cameras or use it as a virtual PTZ camera or you can uh, set it to show you two panoramic views. We one panoramic view here, uh, uh, above and below, on the bottom and on the top, uh, which will also show you uh, much clearer picture of what is happening on the camera, but you're still using one fisheye camera. Failover, uh, this picture represents uh, this module very well. Uh, if some cameras, uh, our failover uh, can be installed to only uh, specific cameras. For example, if some cameras you don't want to lose information in any case uh, from this, this specific cameras. We all know that uh, in big video surveillance systems there might be some uh, uh, problems with hardware and in case uh, the server the server which records the uh, archive from that particular important camera is uh, like run down. Uh, you can transfer this camera immediately within a couple of seconds. The system will do it for you. For you to a standby server. Uh, it can be a separate server used only to record the uh, cameras in case uh, another server breaks down. Or you can uh, send this camera to be recorded by uh, the server which uh, is already used in the system which rec uh, records other cameras. So it actually allow basically allows you to uh, Make sure that the information is safe and you don't lose any piece of information, even in case of the server breaks down. If you want to uh, fail over the all the cameras, you could just need to install this uh, module to all the cameras, or you can install it only on the most important ones. Sabotage detection is the last module I'm going to uh, talk about today. Uh, unfortunately, I also cannot give you the demonstration of it. Uh, because I don't have the uh, video for that. But uh, basically what it does, whenever the camera has been panned away, uh, has been flared or overlapped or defocused, uh, you get immediate notification about that. Uh, it can be a, uh, a case of vandalism or uh, some criminals probably are going to do something bad in the airport and not to be spotted by the cameras. Uh, they try to hide it, which basically, uh, which definitely means that uh, these uh, cameras require, and the places where these cameras are installed, require your maximum attention and better to send the security guards there. Uh, so immediate notification will help you to do it within seconds. Uh, again, you can see that your home uh, and uh, receive notification being at your home on your phone. Uh, no need to s monitor the cameras 24 hours uh, a day. As we all know, the airports work 24 hours by 7 and uh, getting employees, getting operators to monitor all each and every camera 
uh, every minute, every second, every moment uh, would be very expensive and the efficiency of, of it is not uh, high because uh, humans tend to get tired and their um, attention gets worse over time. So this module helps to solve this issue. That's all about the modules. Uh, briefly going to tell you about some other functions. Remote access to your CCTV systems. As I said before, uh, you can watch your cameras even when you sit at home. You can do it either via mobile, or Android or iOS application or via our web client. You can re receive notifications on your devices being at home. You can take screenshots, watch archive, control PTZ cameras, and uh, much more. This is the facts about us. Uh, we have uh, experience of more than 23,000 projects installed already in more than 30 countries. Uh, this was achieved with the help of more than 5,000 partners all over the world. And uh, we are proud to say that we have very transparent pricing policies. Uh, we don't have any hidden costs. And once you purchase U Cortex license, uh, any uh, U Cortex license or any uh, intelligent module license, you only pay once and for a lifetime. All the updates, of the, all the further updates, all, all the technical support is going free of charge for the lifetime of the license. And uh, personal training and pre-sale support for our partners is provided free of charge as well for the lifetime of the license and of the, our partnership contract. This is the countries we have presence in and our uh, VMS is very universal. It can be work, it's working with uh, almost every uh, device. More than 5,000 devices are directly integrated with EOCortex. You can see the most uh, popular brands of uh, IP cameras and IP devices, which are comp we are compliant with. And on VIFA and PSIA protocols are two uh, me uh, modes of communication, of connection we support. If your camera supports this type of connection, you can uh, use it with EOCortex as well. Uh, we do work with uh, multiple projects, big and small, from systems containing five cameras to big uh, enterprise systems with more than 5,000 IP cameras installed uh, in very different industries all over the world. Uh, we do have ex such experience. Okay, I am done with the slides now with uh, what I was planning to tell you. In case you still have any questions or something is not clear or you want to find out more about something, please feel free to ask me now. Uh, I will do my best to answer them and uh, to make things clear for you if something is not clear. Okay, Rupali, you have a question. How do we register a brand of camera to your software? Uh, let me show it to you. Uh, actions are better than words. You have um, uh, in several ways. If the camera is already installed in your local network, you can uh, easily search for a new camera. Here it will uh, show you all the cameras that are installed within your network, within your local network, uh, and you can simply uh, select the camera you want and edit. Oh, I got it. So, uh, if it's not compliant with ONVIF or PSA, because uh, you can p choose ONVIF and PSA here. If it's brand of the camera that we, uh, it's not compliant with EO Cortex, not integrated with EO Cortex, and doesn't have on VIF and PSA support, uh, the only thing you can do is to contact our developing team or contact your sales managers. Uh, we will uh, talk to our development team and ask them to integrate this camera for you in case the project is uh, valuable. In case the pro big project uh, requires that, uh, we can do that this integration uh, pretty fast. So, 
you can contact your personal sales manager or uh, email here the, the model of the uh, the camera if it's not integrated with EOCortex, uh, and we will try to help you. Thank you, Rupali, for your question. Any other questions from you guys? I'm uh, going to stay here for a couple more minutes. In, and as long as there will be questions, I will be answering them and trying to show whatever I can. Thank you, Pali, for your participation. Thank you for taking part. Yeah, have a lovely day, Rupali. Hope to see you on our next webinars. Take care. Thank you to Jason. Hope it was informative and you received all the information you were seeking for. Uh, and this information was useful for you. Uh, in case there are some questions, don't hesitate and don't be shy. You can uh, write them here or just contact me personally. Uh, I will be there to help you. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Thank you. I do appreciate that you uh, participate in the majority of our webinars. It's very, um, it's a pleasure to see your interest in our webinars, meaning that what I do is needed. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Okay, as no more questions are coming my way, uh, I think I'm going to stop the webinar right now. Uh, thank you everyone for taking part. Thank you everyone for your questions, for your attention. I hope it was informative and uh, I hope uh, everything is clear for you. I wish you all a very good day 
and looking forward to see you on our next webinars. I'm going to sign off right now. Thank you, everyone. You will, you will be all receiving the recording of this webinar uh, and the slides via email, I think, latest by tomorrow. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day. Bye-bye.